I'm all tired out. Ugh. This video is similar to a structure fire. How did it start? How can we put it out? There are really only two questions that matter when it comes to tires. Are they grippy enough? And once you've got that grip, will they be strong enough? We'll skip the traditional tire fire and skip right to the skid marks of the real answer. Ugh. Didn't quite work. We'll compare these Continental tires directly to the most ubiquitous Maxxis tires that you'll find on and alongside today's trails. I wanna give a big thanks to Jensen USA who sponsored this video and that made it all possible. Thank you, Jensen. Jensen's a leading online retailer here in the United States of America and they've got a great selection of tires from Continental as well as a bunch of the other top brands as well. I'm gonna link in the description below to the Continental tires we're talking about in this video, as well as to the Maxxis tires we're comparing everything to. Anything you purchase from those links down below that directly helps support my channel, and it's a big part of how we make all this stuff happen here on the internet. In addition to that, I wanna let you know that Continental was cool enough to send me a couple of tires for the video, but not enough, so I had to go buy a few more from Jensen. I didn't pay full retail pop when I bought them, because I do work with Jensen, so I just wanna disclose that to all of you. Let's send it into the video and talk about some tires. Just before Top Gun blasted into theaters last spring, we all started hearing about a new Continental tire range. Just as Tom Cruise was back in the pilot seat, ready to fire upon some bogeys, Continental was ready to blow up some tire budgets to absolute smithereens. While Continental is about the third largest tire company in the world, that really has no effect on their success in mountain biking. Maxxis is about the 10th largest global tire brand, yet according to Pink Bikes polls from Whistler Bike Park's opening days, Maxxis currently holds over 75% of the high-end mountain bike market. That's crazy, but it makes sense. Those tires work really well. The Max Grip rubber grips like a millipede, and I rarely flat the double down or DH casing tires. We flatted. I did a whole review on Max's tires that I'll link to and will also paste in the description down below. Considering this landscape, in this review, we'll compare the Continental Cryptotal tires to the Maxxis Askai Double Down 2.5 WT Max Grip front tire. We'll also talk about the DHR2 up front as well as in back, the Maxxis Aggressor, and the Maxxis Dissector, all as rear tires. I've ridden all of these in either the Double Down or DH casings. As an aside, it's a little ironic that the Askai is more of a front tire. You'd think it'd be a rear tire with a name like that. When it comes to technology, just like with American politics, no one here is truly transparent. All brands claim levels of voodoo that even the most woo would find intimidating, mixed with a percentage of stop leak and snake oil to further explain that you don't need to think and only buy. From my experiences, there is nothing particularly innovative in the world of bicycle tire tech over the last decade. Tubeless ready beads have been solid for a decade, and since then, low hanging fruit like tire sizing, knob patterns, and sideball durability has all improved greatly. But the real secret sauce has only become more secret, and I couldn't tell you that today's tires are really any grippier than last decade's. <laughs> Continental claims special compounding, then simply explains the usual formula. The black chili compound is different because it takes advantage of the latest innovations in polymer and other raw material research. For the first step, we refine proven natural rubber with special synthetic rubbers into a high performance tread mixture. Now, none of this is new. Everyone is using a mix of natural and synthetic rubber. Next, the mixture is combined with special nanometric carbon soot. Finally, the surface and shape properties are optimized for the best use case of the tire. So nanometric carbon soot is a compound called carbon black. This is absolutely nothing new. It's just about all tire brands that use carbon black. It absorbs UV light, adds tensile strength, and adds abrasion wear resistance. There is likely some amount of silica and maybe even chalk added, but we'll never know because Continental doesn't tell us. At the same time, no one else tells us. For my years working in the tire industry, I don't think it matters that much where a tire gets made in whatever country, but I do find it interesting that three of these Continental tires I have here say, made in Germany, right there. Probably made in Korbach, Germany, right outside of Willingen. I spent the night once in a sleeping bag in the bike rack in front of the Continental factory in Germany. And then over here, this tire, made in China. Really hard to read, black on black, made in China. But Continental actually owns their own manufacturing plant in China, so they're not really outsourcing to anyone else in China. Generally, when you're using a tire manufacturer, the hardest part is communication. It's very hard to get exactly what you want approved and signed off and made. They have such a big workforce, it's hard to control thousands of people and consistency and all that. But yeah, interesting. Made in China, made in Germany. Doesn't matter that much, but a little factoid. As someone who used to work in the tire industry over at WTB, I do think the quality of these tires, with both traction and durability, is evident of a higher level of control over production than what other brands usually show. I do think Schwalbe is in a similar position, but from my experience, those don't hold up as well as either Maxxis, WTB Tough Casings, or these new Continentals. 
For science, the first phase of this test was done on an EMTB. Then I swapped these tires over to two different pedal bikes, peasant bikes, acoustic bikes, whatever you want to call them. The grip testing on the EMTB went better than I ever expected. Up front, coming from an ass guy that provided a trustworthy rail to ride through those wet routes, I put the Cryptotol on while we were still getting quite a bit of rain. While the Continental tires looked narrow, comparing them to the 2.5 and 2.6 I'm used to, they really performed quite well. I would say the tight traction feel is similar to the ass guy, perhaps a little percent lower in the loose and rough due to size, but minimal difference at most. I would say the Cryptotol has more front-end traction than the DHR2 and takes longer to get to the slide point. Now, when you're sliding, the DHR2 is a little bit more predictable up front, but all options here are totally acceptable. Front braking on the little Cryptotol was similar to the Ask Guy, which was surprising, and there was less of a penalty for hitting that front brake while in the turn. Oh, holy smokes. The rear tire traction, when cornering, was excellent and quite predictable. Coming from a DHR2 that I'd installed at the beginning of winter, I could still claw my way up some wild little tech climbs. When things got off camber, rear climbing traction would end quick, faster than the bigger tires for sure, but I think that's due to the overall smaller size. Oh, come on. A true 2.6 tire would be ideal for all that, but that's a whole different discussion about tire size. For a little tire, this thing gripped way better than I expected and without any weird side traits. So the hard question, are they tough enough? This is an area where EMTB testing can really help, but it doesn't fully help. I certainly don't go as big on an EMTB because the crazy weight eliminates a lot of my control. But to my surprise, yes, these tires are gnarlier than an Alaskan fisherman. Despite being quite light, at least by my standards, when ridden irresponsibly, these Continental tires definitely survived. Where I ride isn't nearly as rocky as Phoenix, for example, but we do have a lot of high G-force compressions and where you really need stiff sidewalls to help support a tire. I did not experience tire folding over or burping like I do on lighter casing tires, nor did I see any weird gashes. I have not taken these tires to the Southwest, but I would certainly feel confident in attempting it. Once I got honest with gravity and started paying for my descending with a peasant climbing bike, I ran the first custom combo of Cryptotol rear 2.6 mounted up to the front and that 2.4 Cryptotol rear and back. And that actually went really well. On the Rocky Instinct power play, I was riding the Cryptotol DH casing front and rear, appropriate tires for such a bicycle. Now, I like these tires a lot on the Instinct power play e-bike, but I had another pair of these tires that we pieced together that I wanna try on a regular pedal bike. We have Cryptotols again, but the difference is, this is a 2.6 rear tire with the Enduro casing. I'm gonna try that on the front, and then I've got a 2.4 DH casing, same as was on the back of the power play. And we're gonna try this on one of my favorite little bikes that I've been riding way too much and really enjoying. This here, Kona Process 134. Let's try this creative combo on the trail and see how it feels when we don't have 108 newton meters of torque propelling us up the hill. That wheelie is pretty good. Sweet. First test. It's passed. All right, let's go try some real mountain biking on real trails. The front 2.6 feels better than a 2.5 DHR2 up front. It's predictable, it's grippy, and surprisingly it's not even that heavy. It kind of felt like I had a credit card deal with gravity where the fun with the motorized bike was followed up by even more fun on the lung-powered machine. The 2.6 Cryptotol feels quite a bit smaller than the WTB 2.6 tires I generally run. While the knobs are larger on the Cryptotol, they don't squirm, and that point of vagueness that scares us all isn't really there. I'm surprised by this and look forward to running the setup more in the dry dust that'll return any day now. Those 2.6 tires work amazing in loose conditions, but they can kind of struggle when things get more hard packed. I'll have to report back as I get more time in the dust as all this moisture we just got evaporates. Now, when I run the same tires front and rear, I get really annoyed that the front will nearly always slip out before the rear. Ask for a little bit too much there. I need the opposite effect to happen. A little rear drift is okay. I didn't try the FR in both the front and rear. I did try that rear in the larger size up front, and that started to make a bit more sense. If you like to reenact the cornering traits of a steamroller and lean over less in turns, likely you can enjoy the same tires front and rear. But you also probably like steeper head angles and bikes with curly bars, so go ahead, disregard this video, and unsubscribe. 
Finally, my favorite peasant bike of all time, the Ripmo Carbon, along with my favorite Industry 9 carbon wheels, and these tires really got a chance to shine. Minus the additional 20 pounds of heft that a motorized bike brings to the trail, the preferred 2.4 FR and RE combo felt awesome. Great pedaling, minimal rolling resistance, and a fun character that works great with a mid-travel enduro bike like that Ripmo. This was enough tire to push the Ripmo into some fun positions, but not so much tire, like the 2.6 combos, to necessitate any kind of a change in riding style. I would say the rear Cryptotal has a similar level of rolling resistance to the little Maxxis Aggressor, which is to say, quite a bit of pep. However, it also has the added bonus of more braking traction. When lean, the Cryptotal holds up steadily and provides DHR2 levels of cornering grip. It feels like the Cryptotals grab the best traits of both tires and combines them into one single package. On the roots, the grip is plenty sufficient, perhaps better than an Aggressor, but maybe not quite as good as the DHR2. Thank you all so much for joining me in this video. It was a lot of fun to put together. Huge thanks to Jensen USA for making this all possible. I've linked to the various tires we talk about in the description down below. Additional thanks to Riley, who shot and edited a ton of this video. If you guys like this video, every month we post a complete riding tutorial only over to my Patreon page, and you can see a full list of what's available down on Patreon down at the bottom of the description just below all this. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll catch up with all of you in the comments, even below all of that stuff. Peace and wheelies, everyone. <laughs> I'm, I'm filming this. Oh, this is great.